The one thing I thought when I heard about Insta360 releasing an action camera was something like, wow, can this actually be better than the DJI Action 4? Because in my opinion, this is the best action camera in the market. But now we have this, the new Insta360 Ace Pro, and in this video, I will compare it with the DJI Action 4 in terms of video quality, stabilization, low light performance, and other important details so you can make a better decision if you want to get one or the other. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Insta360 or DJI, and not that it matters, but I bought these two cameras to test them out with my own money. When we look at these two cameras side by side, the Ace Pro is bigger and also a bit heavier than the Action 4, but it has a good size to take it anywhere inside your pockets. They are both waterproof, the Action 4 down to 18 meters and the Ace Pro down to 10 meters. They both have a magnetic quick release system at the bottom that will let you mount or remove the camera quickly and use different accessories that each company sells or any of the ones in the market that are compatible with GoPro. The Action 4 has a color front facing display which is touch enabled so you can see a live view of your framing and change all the settings that you need without having to turn the camera around. Insta360 also has a front facing display but this will only show you some basic information. But the big feature that you get with this camera is that the screen in the back can be flipped around completely and in this case I do believe that bigger is better. And the best part is that you can flip this to different angles and this will improve your filmmaking experience. The Insta360 Ace Pro and the DJI Action 4 have a large 1 over 1.3 inches sensor and the video quality on these two devices is excellent. But the Insta360 packed a bunch of features inside the Ace Pro. You get a Leica lens and a very powerful AI processor combined with a quad Bayer sensor that has multiple benefits like higher dynamic range, less noise, better low light performance, and a higher resolution. That's the reason why the Ace Pro can shoot in 8K and side by side against the DJI at 4K you might not even see a difference and even if you do, you probably won't see a huge improvement. That's what I thought as well, but when I zoom in using this video clip just to compare how much difference we can get between these two cameras, I was very impressed by the quality from the 8K video. So the resolution is there, but shooting at 8K can only be done in 24 frames per second and you're not going to have a lot of the features that this camera has to offer. I do believe that this resolution is more of a byproduct of having the quad Bayer sensor and the real benefits that you will get are going to be inside the 4K resolution. The Ace Pro will record in HDR at 24, 25, and 30 frames per second. This is applied automatically and will let your videos have a higher dynamic range. And if we look at these examples, the DJI is doing a good job, but the Ace Pro can retain more details in the clouds. For those who don't like to have HDR in their videos, I know that Insta360 is working on a firmware update to let users select if they want to use it or not. For slow motion, these two cameras can record up to 120 frames per second in 4K and 240 frames per second in 1080p, but using these frame rates will not give you the option to use horizon level, but I like the video quality that these cameras can achieve at 4K for slow motion. If we compare the low light performance, the Insta360 Ace Pro has a video mode called Pure Video, and I have to say that it does a fantastic job lifting the shadows to bring up the details and applying a denoiser at the same time. For an action camera, this is actually pretty insane, and I think that these side-by-side -side videos can tell the story by themselves. Yeah. 
One of the major problems of shooting in low light conditions with action cameras has always been this motion blur or vibration glitch effect that you get with their electronic stabilization. I don't know what they did to the Ace Pro and I'm going to guess that it is related to the AI processing power that it has because they were able to reduce that annoying effect for the most part. You can see that in almost every single case it seems that it's completely gone and you're not going to get this with other action cameras and that's the reason why so many users just like me don't even think about using them in low light situations. I could not believe what I was looking at so I also did a test running and shaking the camera all around to see what would happen. And maybe this test was a bit too much because now you can see vibration going on in the background but let me tell you something. I consider this to be almost perfect if we compare it with the same video clip that was taken with the DJI Action 4. The Action 4 does have an option to reduce that motion blur, it does a decent job but it's not as good as the one on the Ace Pro. And I don't like that it doesn't work in Pro mode so you can't change any setting for the exposure or shoot in D-Log M for example which is one of the top selling points of this camera. But on the positive side, it works at 60 frames per second and you can also activate horizon lock which is going to keep the horizon straight. The pure video on the Ace Pro will let you change the exposure values and I feel that this combination of having a higher video quality with no vibration glitch effect in low light it's something that most of us have been looking for in an action camera, but it doesn't work at 60 frames per second and you won't be able to use horizon lock. And since we're talking about low light, there is a small detail that you need to know about anti-flicker. On the Action 4, you can manually change it or set it to automatic. The Ace Pro doesn't have a manual setting for this and most of the time it does a great job but in some cases I found that it was not working correctly. If we compare the stabilization on these two cameras with plenty of light, they do a great job and it's really hard to tell a difference between one or the other. These two cameras have a zoom of 2x that can be used when you're recording. The Action 4 has this dial on the screen that lets you have a smooth transition. On the Ace Pro, you can tap this icon to zoom or you can double tap anywhere on the screen. It will go all the way to 2x and it seems that it's not losing any quality because unlike the Action 4, it's not doing a crop on the video. And instead, it's taking advantage of the quad bayer sensor which as I said before, it supports a high resolution of 8K and the result is less noise and more details. To confirm this, I did a very simple test inside my studio. On the right side, you can still read what it says over here. The numbers on the left are completely gone and you should be able to see a difference on the picture of the camera. Some people were complaining that using the zoom on the Ace Pro would have a black screen when it does the transition. It does happen on the screen when you're recording, but this is not going to show up in the video itself. I also wanted to test the minimum focus distance which is supposed to be 40 centimeters on both cameras. At 30 centimeters, none of them should be in focus, although the DJI Action 4 already looks quite good. At 40 centimeters, the Ace Pro should be in focus but still not quite enough and it seems that the sweet spot is around 60 centimeters. So if you're going to use this for vlogging, you should not use it too close to your face or just buy a small tripod like this one which is really nice for vlogging videos. The Action 4 can record videos using D-Log M with 10-bit color which is going to make them more flexible if you want to color grade those files in post. The Ace Pro doesn't support 10-bit color and as far as I know, it is not going to get it in the future. If you ever had the DJI Pocket 2, you probably remember the pause record option that it had and I'm happy to say that the Ace Pro has this feature so you can start to record the video and instead of stopping it, you can pause and then keep recording as soon as you're ready to continue. And this means that you can have a single file instead of multiple ones that you would need to put together in post. So it's actually like editing inside the camera without actually doing so, right?
Now, there is a very clever twist to this feature that I was not expecting. You can go back to any video that you have taken in the past days, weeks, or even months, and you can keep recording to that video file over and over again, and the only requirement is that it was shot using regular video mode, pure video, time-lapse, or slow motion. Besides having voice control on both action cameras, the Ace Pro has gesture controls to start or stop recording or to take a picture, which is fantastic for solo content creators. There is another nice feature where you can cancel the video that you're recording by holding the record button to avoid having multiple videos that you're not going to use because something went wrong. And if you go inside the settings, you can activate an AI assistant and when you're done recording, it will highlight the best parts of a video clip. You can also do this manually without the AI assistant. And for me, the most impressive part is that you can make a new video clip using the highlights that you want. This basically means that you can make as many cuts as you want inside the camera without using an app or an editing program. The Insta360 app has multiple useful features. I am not a huge fan of the special effects that you can use, but now they have this new AI warp effect that you can apply to your videos using a few presets. But you can also use your own keywords to get an AI-generated effect. It does have some limitations. For example, you can only apply a maximum of 4 seconds at a time, and for now, there is a limit on how many times you can do it every month. I, I don't think that anyone is going to buy the camera just for that feature, but I'm telling you, it's really fun to use, so uh, yeah. When it comes to the battery life, it is very similar on these two cameras recording at 4K. The Action 4 will last for about 2 hours and the Ace Pro will run for about 1 hour and 45 minutes. The battery can be charged quickly so you can use them in no time or you can just buy extra batteries. Now testing these two cameras for overheating was done indoors with no air condition or airflow. At 4K and 24 frames per second, neither one of them had any issues. And at 4K at 60 frames per second, the Ace Pro felt very hot to the touch but the battery died at 1 hour and 15 minutes without overheating. On the other hand, the Action 4 overheated at 80 minutes with only 5% left on the battery. Hello, how is everyone doing today? This is a microphone test of the DJI Action 4. Hello, how is everyone doing today? This is a microphone test of the Insta360 Ace Pro. The internal microphone on both cameras are good enough for everyday videos, but if you want to have the best quality, the best thing is to get an external microphone. Now, in terms of accessories, I feel that Insta360 has a wider range of options to choose from depending on your needs, like this external microphone adapter or this other one which is my favorite to replace the mount that comes with the Ace Pro so you can have a quarter inch thread hole to use with a tripod or you can flip down these fingers to use with other accessories. I actually bought a similar one for the Action 4 and I have to say that these are a game changer. If you want to mount the Ace Pro in a vertical position, you can get this L-shaped accessory. The Action 4 does come with this protective case that lets you do the same and it's going to give some protection to your device at the same time. Something else that I want to mention is that the lens cover on the Insta360 is not supposed to be replaceable. If something happens to it, Insta360 will replace it for free during the first year, but you're going to have to send the camera to one of their locations. Okay, so my thoughts on this is that if you already have the DJI Action 4, I don't think that you have to go to the store and buy the new Insta360 Ace Pro. If you're looking to buy a new camera, the Action 4 has a lower price at $400. The Ace Pro has a retail price of $450, and even though it's a bit more expensive, in my opinion, the Ace Pro is the clear winner if you're going to use it in low light situations, like on a cloudy day, indoors, and even if it's quite dark outside. And for that reason, this is the action camera that I'll be using the next time I travel. The links to these two cameras are going to be down below and I would really appreciate if you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. 
I hope you're having an amazing day and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.